Hi and welcome back. What I have playing for you here is what's left of the footage that I was planning on using for tonight's video. I was going to do more experimenting and just play around with some different ideas to see if I can get a little closer to making a fairly reasonable file, but uh, turns out I really don't have to do that. I got such a great response from the last video. People sent in you know, great information and great links for some really good videos. It's kind of pointless for me to come on here and try and pretend that I know what I'm doing. The reason I made a video on how to make your own files is because when I searched on YouTube I couldn't find any videos on that subject. Well, it turns out that I was searching for something like file making or some kind of a thing like that and I was getting nothing but computer software and you know, all these obscure videos. Turns out I should have been searching for file cutting which never occurred to me and I would have pulled up all the videos that everyone sent me. So what I'm going to do today is just give you a quick overview of you know most of the information that was sent in. I'll describe how the tools are sharpened and illustrate the main difference between the way I was doing it and the proper way of cutting a file. Now the first thing that was brought to my attention was the bevel angle for the chisel that was used to cut a fine file. I was using about a 60 degree angle because that's how most cold chisels are sharpened and it turns out that that's only used for extremely coarse files and I'm not interested in making coarse files, you can buy those. But for a fine file it's actually 35 degrees. And this represents how the chisel is actually shaped. This is looking through the thickness of the chisel. So it's an extremely fine chisel and the bevels are ground very unevenly. The bevel to the front has an extremely large face and the one at the back is relatively short. But if you'll notice, and I have it exaggerated here, but the actual cutting edge isn't sharp. It's actually flattened somewhat. And this doesn't make any sense at all, but you'll see in a minute that it actually does produce a better cutting edge. And this drawing just illustrates how the chisel is positioned in relation to the teeth that it's cutting. In this example, I'm going to be using a chisel that is ground to 35 degrees, but it has a very sharp cutting edge. I also want to point out that the chisel that I'm using is about 10 times thicker than the one that you'll see used in the videos. And I don't think it actually makes a lot of difference as far as the teeth are concerned. I think the cross section of those chisels just makes them lighter and easier to manage if you're cutting files all day. Now the other thing that I was doing wrong is I was cutting the teeth away from me. So I was starting to cut the teeth at the handle end of the file and chiseling away from the handle. But in actual fact you should start at the tip of the file and work your way back to the handle. And what you're doing is you're using that first cut to register the chisel for the next cut. And how that's done is you make the first tooth in the file and then you place the chisel in front of that tooth and drag it back until you feel that tooth with the chisel. And then you strike your next tooth there. And then you continue that process down the file. Cutting a tooth, dragging the chisel back to that tooth, cutting the next one, and then moving on. In this next example, I'm going to cut another set of teeth, and this time I'll be using the chisel sharpened the way they recommend. And if you look at the very tip of the chisel, you will see a shiny flat spot right on the tip of the cutting edge. This is probably flattened more than it needs to be, but if I did it any less than that, you wouldn't be able to pick it up in the video. And it actually does cut a pretty good tooth regardless. 
And again, I'm using that same process of cutting one tooth and then registering the back of the chisel up against that tooth to locate the next tooth in the series. The chisel that I'm using is a little narrow for this stock. That's why I'm double cutting each tooth. Um, all I'm trying to do here is to create a, a sample that's large enough for you to see the detail of the teeth. So this is the first set of teeth that I cut with the sharp chisel. Notice that there's a slight upturned burr at the front of each tooth. Now if you remember the test in the first video, this didn't seem to affect the performance of the file in any way. It cut just fine, but this shape of tooth will probably wear down a lot faster because those sharp points are going to break away and you're going to have a rough cutting edge behind them. And these are the teeth that I cut using the dulled file. Notice how the tops are more chisel-like and more sawtooth-like. There isn't that upturned burr, and you can tell this is just a much stronger shape. Most of the information that I explained in this video uh, came from this book, which is a reprint of an older manual from the early 1900s. So it's, uh, it's a modern reprinting. It's readily available. All the other links will be found in the description for this video, and there are some good videos there, so do take the time to have a look. And I do want to thank everyone that did take the time to do the research and submit that information. If you're having any trouble zooming in to read the pages that I've submitted here, let me know and I'll uh, figure out another way of getting that information to you. Hi, I'm Dennis and thanks for watching. If you're interested in supporting this channel, the simplest way of course is to like, comment and subscribe. If you have questions and you want to contact me directly, you can do so by emailing me at either one of the addresses that I have listed here. It may take me a couple of days, but I will get back to you. Of course, financial support is always welcome. The only product that I produce is the information contained in these free videos. So if you like the work that I'm doing and the videos that I'm putting out and you can spare a couple of dollars a month, consider becoming a patron by clicking the orange Patreon logo at the bottom of the screen. Thank you and we'll see you next time.